And now, these three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. Hello everyone. Today, I am going to be talking about the third chapter of the 8th Standard English Textbook, a poem by Rabindranath Tagore titled Taj Mahal. The lines that are prescribed for our study is from Tagore's lengthy poem Shah Jahan. The few lines that we have got to study speaks of the immortal creation, the Taj Mahal, and the timeless beauty of that great monument. Before we get to know more about the poem, let us get to know the poet briefly. Rabindranath Tagore was a Bengali poet, writer, music composer, and painter who in 1913 became the first non-European to win the Nobel Prize in Literature for his work, Gitanjali. He is also the composer of India's national anthem, Janaganamana. I am now going to recite the poem. As I recite, I want you all to look at the screen and recite along with me. Shall we begin? You knew, Emperor of India, Shah Jahan, that life, youth, wealth, renown, all float away down the stream of time. Your only dream was to preserve forever your heart's pain. The harsh thunder of imperial power would fade into sleep like a sunset's crimson splendor. But it was your hope that at least a single, eternally heaved sigh would stay to grieve the sky. Though emeralds, rubies, pearls are all but as a glitter of a rainbow tricking out empty air and must pass away, Yet, still, one solitary tear would hang on the cheek of time in the form of this white and gleaming Taj Mahal. This is a poem that celebrates the permanence or eternity of love and art. The poet illustrates this theme through the timeless monument Taj Mahal. Considered as one among the seven wonders of the world, Taj Mahal is a mausoleum of white marble built in Agra between 1631 and 1648 by order of the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his favorite wife Mumtaz Mahal. I just told you that the Taj Mahal is a mausoleum. What is a mausoleum? A mausoleum is a large stately or royal tomb or a building housing such a tomb. A tomb, T-O-M-B, pronounced tomb, is a pit in which the dead body of a human being is deposited. In very simple terms, a tomb is a grave. How can a mausoleum become an eternal monument of love? Let us find out from the poem. The poem is addressed to Shah Jahan, the Mughal emperor. The poet begins by telling that Shah Jahan knew all about the impermanence or transience of life and youth and worldly honours like wealth and fame. The poet says that the great Mughal emperor knew that all these, life, youth, wealth and renown, would all float away down the stream of time. What do you think about this observation of the poet? Simple, yet so profound, right? Come to think of it, what is life but a passing dream? As the lines of the famous nursery rhyme goes, Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Life is a passing shadow and so is youth. Youth and beauty are short-lived. And so is the case with wealth and fame. Today's rich man may be tomorrow's pauper and today's pauper may become a millionaire tomorrow. In any case, we are not going to take these riches and wealth to our grave. Fame is yet another trap that most human beings fall for. We run after fame or renown, forgetting relationships and everything around us. 
but is this hard earned fame permanent absolutely not the stream or river of time washes off everything all that is worldly will perish or disappear one day the poet says that even though shah jahan knew about the futility or meaninglessness of life and everything worldly he had but one dream that dream was to preserve or protect his heart's pain forever what was his heart's pain the death of his beloved wife mumtaz mahal shah jahan was heartbroken at the death of his dear wife and he wished to immortalize that pain forever in the form of a memorial or monument the emperor knew that his empire and the harsh thunder of imperial power would disappear into sleep or nothingness sooner or later the word imperial is related to empire no matter how powerful or harsh or rude a ruler or emperor is during the time of his rule it will not last forever empires have vanished or disappeared they still continue to disappear and human beings whether they be kings or beggars will all meet with the same fate which is death the poet says that shah jahan knew that his imperial power that was as powerful as thunder would disappear like the splendor or beauty of a crimson sunset have you watched the sky during sunset what a glorious and beautiful sight it is right but the beauty of sunset hardly lasts for 2 hours so short lived the rich deep crimson color crimson as a rich deep red color so the rich deep crimson color of the sky soon gives way to darkness so is the case with kingly power it will fade or disappear just like the beauty of the crimson sunset but in spite of knowing all this it was shah jahan's hope that at least one eternally heaved sigh would stay to grieve the sky shah jahan wanted taj mahal to capture his grief for his pain on losing his wife and remain forever he wanted to protect or preserve the sorrow of his heart and also his love through this memorial Uh, shah jahan wanted the sigh of his heart to remain forever in the form of taj mahal and grieve or pain even the sky by the way sigh is a loud heaved a heaved sigh is a loud breath taken with effort but here in the context of the poem eternally heaved sigh uh, stands for the emperor's emperor's sadness or sorrow Tagore further goes on to speak about precious stones like emeralds, rubies, and pearls. Emerald is a precious gemstone that is green in color. Ruby is another precious stone that is deep red in color. Pearl is also a precious gem. They all represent the riches of the world. These precious stones are compared to a rainbow that shines and glitters but passes away or disappears quickly. a rainbow is only a trick played by the sun on empty air no matter how appealing it looks when it appears in the sky it doesn't last long the same is the case with precious stones the poet says that even though the emperor was aware of the temporariness of worldly things he wanted one solitary tear or one tear drop alone to remain forever in the form of taj mahal the white marble structure just as a tear drop hangs on the cheek of a person the emperor wanted his tear drop in the form of the white and shining taj mahal to hang forever on the cheek of time the emperor shah jahan is no more and his empire has disappeared like a dream the workers who helped construct the taj mahal are no more but the symbol of his love the taj mahal carries the eternal and timeless message of the em- of the emperor's love artist is mortal but art is immortal life is transient but art is eternal and so is love let us quickly look at the figures of speech used in the poem 
Before we identify the figures of speech used in the poem, let us try and understand why they are used in language. Figures of speech or figurative language is the ornament of language or of poetry. So why do we use ornaments? To look more beautiful, right? In the same way, poets make use of figures of speech to make poetry more appealing. Some of the most common figures of speech used in language are simile, metaphor, personification, alliteration, etc. Let's see which of these is used in our poem. The poet has used simile in the poem. There are two examples of simile given in the poem. By the way, what is a simile? A simile is a figure of speech that compares two things using the words like or as. So we have two such examples of simile in the poem. The first example is where, where the harsh thunder of imperial power is compared to the crimson splendor of sunset. The lines, the harsh thunder of imperial power would fade into sleep like a sunset's crimson splendor. The second example is where the glitter of emeralds, rubies and pearls is compared to the glitter of a rainbow. Though emeralds, rubies, pearls are all but as the glitter of a rainbow. So that's, uh, these are the examples of simile uh, in the poem. We have two examples of metaphor in the poem. What is a metaphor? Metaphor is a figure of speech that directly states a comparison without the use of words like like or as. Example number one from the poem, the sigh of Shah Jahan's heart is compared to Taj Mahal in the lines, a single eternally heaved sigh would stay to grieve the sky. The second example is where Taj Mahal is compared to one solitary tear on the cheek of time. The poet has also made use of imagery in the poem. Imagery is a language that helps build images or pictures in the reader's mind. Examples of visual images or images related to sight include glitter of a rainbow, crimson splendor of sunset, solitary tear, etc. Auditory imagery or images related to sound uh, can be found in phrases like the harsh thunder of imperial power and heaved sigh. The poem is written in free verse, which means that it employs no rhyming words or rhyme scheme. So that's it about the poem. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you so much for watching.